Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using slope deflection method. Before analyzing, let us see the beam one time. In this beam, there are three spans AB, BC, and CD. Also, we have an overhanging portion DE. In the span AB, we have a point load and uniformly distributed load. In the span BC, there are two point loads. In the span CD, there is a point load and a uniformly distributed load. In the overhanging part DE, in the point E, we have a concentrated movement, 10 kN meter. It is acting in the clockwise direction. The moment of inertia for AB is 1.8 I, for BC it is I, for CD it is 1.6 I, and for DE it is I. Length of AB is 3 meter, length of BC is 5 meter, length of CD is 4 meter, and the overhanging portion is 2 meter. In the point D, we can easily find the final moments. Because on the right side we have overhanging. In the point E we have concentrated movement 10 kN meter. It is acting in the clockwise direction. So MDE should be acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So it will be negative and MDC should be acting in the clockwise direction and it should be positive. The values of MDE and MDC should be equal to this moment 10. Now we are going to find the fixed end moments. First let us take the span AB. First let us consider the point load. It is acting in the center. If the point load is acting in the center, the formulas to find the fixed end moments are WL upon 8 and WL upon 8. On the left side, the fixed end movement will be acting in the anti-clockwise direction so that it will be negative. And on the right side, it will be acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive. Here W is 16 and L is 3. Now let us take the uniformly distributed load 4 kN per meter. If uniformly distributed load is acting for the full span, the formulas to find the fixed end moments are WL square upon 12 and WL square upon 12. Since this movement is acting in the anticlockwise direction, it will be negative. Here W is 4 and L is 3. We have to add these two. After adding, we will get minus 9 kN meter. And when we add these two, we will get positive 9 kN meter. Now let us take the span BC. In the span BC, there are two eccentric point loads, 50 kN and 25 kN. If in the fixed beam, there is an eccentric point load, the formulas to find the fixed end moments are WAB square upon L square and W A square B upon L square. First, let us take this load. Here W is 50, A is 1 and B is 4. Let us apply them and L is 5. Now let us take this load. Here W is 25, A is 3 and B is 2 and L is 5. After adding these two, we will get minus 44 kN meter. And after adding these two, we will get 26 kN meter. Now let us find the fixed end moments in the span CD. In the span CD, we have a point load and uniformly distributed load. First, let us take the uniformly distributed load. We know the formulas to find the fixed end moments. Here W is 6 and L is 4. 
Now let us take the eccentric point load. We know the formulas to find the fixed end moments. Here W is 48, A is 1, B is 3 and L is 4. After adding these two, we will get M of CD and after adding these two, we will get M of DC. In the slope deflection method, we have to check the number of supports where slope can occur. In the points B, C and D, there are hinged supports. So the number of supports where slope can occur is 3. In the point B, there is theta B. In the point C, there is theta C. And in the point D, there is theta D. To find these three unknowns, we need three equations. One equation can be made in the joint D. We know that in the joint D, MDC is equal to 10 kN meter. One equation can be made in the joint C. We know that in the joint C, when we add the moments MCB and MCD, it will be 0. And one equation can be made in the joint B. In the joint B, when we add the moments MBA and MBC, it will be 0. Now let us make the slope deflection equations. First let us make them in the span AB. In the equations, first let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of AB is 3. Let us apply that. The moment of inertia is 1.8i. So instead of i, we have to apply 1.8i. In the point A, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So, theta A will be 0. Finally, in the span AB, we have made two equations. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations in the span BC. First, let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of BC is 5. Finally, in the span BC, we have made two equations. Now, let us make the slope deflection equations in the span CD. First, let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of CD is 4. The moment of inertia is 1.6i. So, instead of i, we have to apply 1.6i. Using this equation, let us make an equilibrium equation. We know the value of MDC which is 10. We can take 17 on the other side. So it will come as negative. 10 minus 17 we will get minus 7. So in the span CD we have made two equations. Now let us make the equilibrium equation in the joint B. We know that in the joint B when we add MBA and MBC, it will be 0. From the slope deflection equations, let us apply the expressions for MBA and MBC. When we add, we will get this. We have to always keep the numerical on the right side. Let us keep this equation as number 7. We know that in the joint C, when we add MCB and MCD, we will get 0. From the slope deflection equations, let us apply the expressions for MCB and MCD. When we add both of them, we will get this equation. Let us keep this equation as number 8. Now we have three equations, the 7th one, 8th one and the 6th one. Now using the calculator, we can solve these three equations. After solving, we will get Ea theta b, Ea theta c and Ea theta d. If you do not know how to solve three equations in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. When we apply the value of Ea theta b in the equation number 1, we will get Mab. When we apply the value of Ea theta b in the equation number 2, we will get Mba. When we apply the values of Ea theta b and Ea theta c in the equation number 3, 
we will get MBC. When we apply the values of EA theta B and EA theta C in the equation number 4, we will get MCB. When we apply the values of EA theta C and EA theta D in the equation number 5, we will get MCD. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the movements. Now we are going to find the vertical reactions. First, let us take the span AB and find the vertical reactions. In the span AB, we have two movements. MAB, which is acting in the clockwise direction. MBA, which is also acting in the clockwise direction. By taking moment about B, we can find RA and by applying this rule, we can find RB1. Now let us take the span BC and find the reactions RB2 and RC1. In this span, there are two movements. MBC, which is acting in the anticlockwise direction and MCB, which is acting in the clockwise direction. By taking movement about to C, we can find RB2 and by applying this rule, we can find RC1. Now let us take CD and DE together and find the reactions RC2 and RD. No need to consider these two movements because both of them will get eliminated. We have to consider this movement which is acting in the anticlockwise direction and this movement which is acting in the clockwise direction. By taking movement about D, we can find RC2 and then by applying this rule, we can find RD. Let us find RB by adding RB1 and RB2 so that for RB, we will get 76.6 kN. To find RC, we have to add RC1 and RC2. When we add both of them, we will get 78.775 kN. Here you can see the shear force diagram. Now we are going to draw the bending moment diagram. First, let us find the bending moment in the ends and in the joints. In the point A, we have sagging bending moment so that it will be positive. In the joint B, we have hogging bending moment so that it will be negative. In the joint C, we have hogging bending moment so that it will be negative. In the joint D, we have hogging bending moment so that it will be negative. Finally, in the point E also, we have hogging bending moment so that it will be negative. Using the end movements and the reactions, we can find the movements under the point loads. We can use right hand side rule, clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. Let us take the span AB and find the movement under the 16 kN point load. This movement is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive. This reaction is acting in the clockwise direction so that it will be positive and the distance is 1.5. The UDL is acting in the anticlockwise direction so that it will be negative. With the UDL, we have to multiply the distance and distance by 2. After the calculation, we will get 1.25 kN meter. In the similar way, we can find the movement under the 50 kN point load, 25 kN point load in the span BC. In the span CD, we can find the movement under the 48 kN point load. Here you can see the bending moment diagram. Alternatively, we can draw the bending moment diagram by superposition method. In this method, first we have to consider every span as a separated simply supported beam. First, let us take the span AB 
and assume that it is a separate assembly supported beam we need to find the reactions ra and rb since we have symmetrical loading we have to add the total load and then divide that by 2 when we do that we will get ra and rb now using the right hand side rule we can find the bending moment under the 16 kN point load which is 16.5 kN meter now let us take the span bc and find the reactions rb and rc let us draw the bending moment diagram 50 into 1 we will get 50 and 25 into 2 we will get 50 now let us take the span cd and find the reaction rc and then we can draw the bending moment diagram now using the end moments we can draw the end moment diagram then we can combine the assembly supported moment diagram and the end moment diagram so that we will get the bending moment diagram now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video